Elaine Martis uh, will now present uh, the closing perspective. And uh, it's an it's a honor and a pleasure to have you here to give us your perspective. Thanks, David. Really appreciate that. And um, uh, this is a, the fun part of being a meeting organizer, I guess, is that I get to sum up. I just have a few quick slides that I wanted to use to um, sort of portray the momentum of the project, but also give you a flavor of what's uh, underway. Um, as I see, TCGA is something that's sort of uh, growing and morphing and changing as we learn more and do, and are able to do more within the network that we've generated. And it certainly has been, as a person who's in, been involved in this network for some time now, um, very exciting and gratifying to see not only the number of people attending the meeting from outside the TCGA network, but to also see the exciting applications of the data, including especially the last two talks, really beginning to reach out to the clinical aspects of the disease and begin to impact. Uh, all of that. So um, I just put together a few slides, which I'm not any better at advancing than anyone else was, apparently. There we go. So um, as many of you know from Eric's opening comments, the original um, notion of TCGA came from a, a 2005 white paper. And you can see here that the short-term goals were milestones such as samples collected and analyzed and data made accessible, but we're already seeing at this meeting a longer term um, beginning to move towards impacting the lives of patients. And I think that's only gonna be more evident as we go forward in time. Um, one of the great aspects of this um, project that's really been driven forward over just the last year, as you can see, is the difference in the number of tumor types and the multitude of different types of data that are going through our pipelines now across uh, many, many tumor types. And you've heard examples of that throughout the meeting this week. But um, the bottom graph really represents where we're at. And I'll tell you a little bit more about where the future is going to take us. Um, Part of all of this is the aspect of big science. So we're seeing the benefits of this, and this is you know, really following on the heels of other large science projects, such as the Human Genome Project, as well as the HapMap and Thousand Genomes Projects that have been mentioned here, uh, as well as others. And you know, it's true that, and really we've seen great evidence, that these big science projects have multitudes of spin-offs for other people in terms of the different kinds of analyses that can be done and the ultimate downstream benefits to biomedical uh, knowledge that are created. And I think um, this is uh, one of the values of having big science projects, uh, as Eric articulated as well earlier. So right now, um, there's a status report for your consideration in terms of data available from all of the tumor projects. You can see multiple thousands of tumor normal pairs um, in terms of in the pipeline at various stages and data becoming available. And this will continue as we move forward on these multiple tumor types that I just showed. Um, it, this really um, just exemplifies the notion behind TCGA, which is not to take DNA uh, data or RNA data or what have you in a vacuum, but rather to try and integrate it across the data types as shown. And I think um, these are some of the most exciting challenges that we have ahead of us is really coming up with intelligent and informative data integration approaches. You've seen a few examples at this meeting. I think there are others that are underway and the multitude of data types I think will really drive this. Um, because there are, of course, many, many ways in which a gene can be altered in the context of oncogenesis. So this is my bold prediction, uh, mine and mine alone, I should point out. I think 2012 is going to be the year of TCGA post-pilot publications, and I've just listed some of the projects here that are really well along, um, uh, several of which I'm happy to be a part of, including AML, breast, and end endometrial cancer. Um, but there are going to be, I think, some very exciting primary publications as well as supporting um, ancillary data analyses coming out of these projects just in this next calendar year. And this is probably an underestimate at this point in time, but these are the ones that I know the most about. In addition to the exome capture, um, and I think, again, this was alluded to in several talks, there are whole genome sequencing uh, approaches going on in multiple tumor types. And this will end up being uh, important moving forward because this gives you more a, a sense of the multitude of genomic alterations that aren't always captured 
by exome data and we'll um, better understand how structural variants, for example, um, are going to impact um, uh, tumor uh, genomics. So expanding the enterprise, so just a couple last slides on where this is all going. I've listed some examples here, some pilot projects um, that were announced this week at the steering committee meeting, including looks into formal and fixed paraffin embedded preserved tissues. Of course, as many of you know who do biobanking or tissue banking, there's a wealth of data uh, just waiting for us to mine out of formal and fixed paraffin embedded tissues. But of course, these present significant challenges to the quality and quantities of DNA and RNA that are available. Nonetheless, I think they uh, deserve some uh, careful attention and we have some pilot projects that are approved now for this tissue type of preservation. I'll show some data next on mouse models of human cancers, but um, these provide us some of the most important experimental models, especially as we move into targeted therapies, um, vaccines, and other aspects of uh, human cancer care. And so I think it's important to begin characterizing these within the TCGA landscape as well for that further uh, downstream use. We also have initially uh, agreed to go forward on projects to study rare tumor types, and there will be more um, uh, data or uh, choices coming out of those uh, soon. But the notion here is that while you have smaller numbers of tissues available for study, we will still continue to apply this comprehensive focus of assays and analysis that you've heard about um, in the last day and a half. As far as integration efforts for TCGA data with other uh, projects that are ongoing, there are two to mention. Um, one is sort of an obvious mention, which is integrating with the International Cancer Genomics Consortium so that we have a more global view of cancer, if you will, and I think um, there are well-recognized uh, population-specific differences, et cetera, across cancer types, and I think this will be incredibly informative for everyone and expands the reach of TCGA data uh, beyond the United States. States and Canada. And then lastly, integration efforts, um, which we uh, heard about. There was a coincident meeting going on here for um, CPTAC, which is an NCI-funded project to look at um, proteomics of cancer. And um, what the proteomics folks are finding out is that if we know about the genomics of cancer, that can be tremendously informative in proteomic investigations. And of course, this provides a very rich data set for these downstream uh, proteomics efforts. So there will be integration and interface between TCGA across um, several selected tumor types, breast, ovarian, and colorectal, uh, moving into these uh, funded CPTAC uh, groups in proteomic investigation. So I think that will be sort of like the gravy on the potatoes, if you will. Um, and so then I just wanted to say a couple of words about these um, specific areas. Um, so I was uh, very uh, honored to be named the chair of this Mouse TCGA committee member by uh, Dr. Varmus. Um, and this included uh, several luminaries in the mouse models of human cancer uh, listed here under me. I'm not such a luminary. But then uh, Kenna was also the, the guiding force in keep him, keeping us all on track. Um, and basically what we did was solicit uh, information from the mouse models community on different models that were available for human cancer. The results were overwhelming. Almost 100 different um, types uh, of cancer models were referred into us with uh, information about them. And I'm just listing the four here that we selected as a group for the initial look in this pilot project. So they include a prostate cancer model that is a, a gem a genetically engineered model, a melanoma model that is driven by a known carcinogen, uh, and um, then a non-small cell lung cancer model, um, another carcinogen driven model from urethane injection, and then uh, noting the incredible amount of samples and data that are coming out of human breast cancer studies in TCGA, um, we selected several breast cancer models uh, for mouse uh, that are listed here as well. So we're underway with some of the nuts and bolts paperwork of getting these samples into the BCR, identifying pathologists who understand what mouse tumors look like as opposed to human tumors. Um, uh, the gratifying thing there is that there are a lot of veterinary pathologists out there who are keen to help out. And so um, you'll see most of these hopefully moving into the new year um, as identified pilot projects for which data will be available. 
And then uh, I already mentioned sort of the nuts and bolts a aspects of the CPT, uh, CPTAC uh, interaction here, and we sorted out some of the early details of that yesterday during a lunchtime meeting. Um, so I think that'll be an exciting new enterprise for TCGA data to play in. So what are the next steps? Well, first of all, um, as an organizer, I want to thank everybody for attending and for those last few of you here that are, um, are stayed on till the better end, especially thank you for staying. Um, I think it's been a, a great interaction uh, this week and um, uh, we're looking forward to more. Um, certainly, as a meeting organizer, I would be loath to suggest that, that we can't make this meeting better. So if you have ideas, uh, please provide those to myself, Linda, or to Kenna and her staff. Um, and just before the, the last bullet point, I also wanted to um, mention that putting conferences like this together, as many of you know who have ever organized things, are not straightforward enterprises. There are lots of what ifs and last minute things that need to uh, be atten paid attention to. So in that regard, um, could we please give a warm round of applause for um, not only the NCI and uh, NHGRI staffs that were involved in the planning of this, but also to Capital Consulting for excellent um, organization. And while I'm at it, to the outstanding audiovisual staff at the back who advanced our slides for us. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, the big uh, looming question is, will we do this again? Absolutely. I think the, the response this time has been more than we anticipated, and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Uh, please look for timing and announcements for the second symposium. And with that, I will thank you and uh, invite you to partake in lunch, which is waiting outside. Thanks very much. And let's thank Elaine. <laughs> well, really, really a successful meeting. Very, very exciting.